All right, I have it's 1131, so I will go ahead and get started. Thank you for uh, coming to the, I know there's a ton of talks out there, and I appreciate those of you who have showed up to learn about Ortilius and tracking DevOps and security data, something that um, is near and dear to my heart, and I have thought about this for quite some time. Uh, and it's an important topic, especially as we venture into things that we, like AI. What's AI without data, right? So we've had a security awakening. I'm sure most of you are more than aware of this security awakening that we've gone through. Uh, and here's just some numbers to ponder to kind of get us started. 742%, the astonishing growth rate of malicious supply chain attacks. It's kind of crazy, actually. 88% of boards that consider uh, cybersecurity a risk of doing business it means that they're actually talking about it more than just uh, you know at the lower levels, but at the at the board level. And then this is my favorite number: 65 to 80% of companies who say they need more visibility around uh, application security. Now, sometimes when we talk about visibility, we think about observability and using observability tooling to track transactions. But that particular number goes farther than just what, are, what, what, are my, what does it look like in my Kubernetes cluster? This is what is the visibility, what visibility do we have into our software supply chain? Who's creating the software supply chain? Who's building these software components? What's the, you know, what, what's the provenance? Why are we using them? Who's using them? So before we get too far, um, I am Tracy Reagan. I am the CEO of a, a little company that, oh, I always say the company that could, uh, called Deploy Hub. I have served on the board of the Open Source Security Foundation. I helped start the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and I helped start the Eclipse Foundation. So I've been around open source for, for some time, and I guess I am a, a kind of a perpetual volunteer when it comes to these open source projects. I'm currently on the board of the, um, the uh, CDF TOC, and I'm the Ortelius community organizer, and I also co-founded a company called OpenMake Software with my partner, Steve Taylor, who is sitting here in the front row supporting me. So what are we really talking about when I talk about Ortelius and the, the, the process of tracking data? In a monolithic world, uh, we may have not seen this as big as a problem because when we run our builds, we run a full build of all the components. Uh, we have builds that will run for, <laughs> we used to have, uh, we, we supported builds in the past that run for you know four to six hours, some even longer. But when that build ran, it generated logs and everything in that build directory. And if somebody needed to know information about it, we had all those logs in that build directory. Um, S-bombs, uh, some people might be generating them, uh, some people may not. It, uh, I recently wrote an article with uh, Vincent Dannon from Red Hat called S-bombs. So far, so good, so what? <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the point here, is that we have trapped information across all of these build systems that we have, all these workflows, all these Jenkins workflows, Circle CI workflows. We have tons of data that's underneath the covers and sitting in these, these logs in what I call trapped across all these workflows. And in a microservices environment, you're doing that even more, right? Uh, microservices decouple a monolith, and so every single microservice has its own SBOM, its own CVEs, its own deployment configuration, its own, its own inventory. And that is where we start struggling with understanding our supply chain. We also have to think about the fact that we're generating a lot of data and we work very hard to generate that data, but we often don't do anything with it. Now, if you think about what uh, some of the, the, the new AI coming up, and we, Christy did a nice talk on AI during the keynote. If we think about AI in terms of DevOps, we simply don't have the data to really build AI systems. Uh, if we look at Copilot, uh, if you haven't played on it, you should. Copilot uses GitHub as a source of information to, to, to create those, uh, the, those code snippets. What do we have in the DevOps world? We don't. <laughs> we don't have a central place even within our, in each individual organization to track this kind of data. 
So Artilius is about tracking this kind of d data, SBOMs, and SBOMs, there's a lot of information in SBOMs, you know, what release versions, what's the drift across the cluster across, between two different clusters running the same microservices, they're probably not the same versions. And Ortelius is looking to untrap that information, pull it into a central uh, data point and dashboard so that we can start using it. Once we get that data, we can start doing some more interesting things with it. So when we talk about log visibility and what Ortelius is tracking, it's tracking all the work, the hard work you guys are already doing. Um, it, it tracks things like your, uh, again, your SBOMs, regardless of what you're using, SIFT or something else. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull in any of your versions, any time a new, a new version of a microservice or any component for that matter, any component whatsoever. As soon as a new version comes up, it, log it, it aggregates the data up to what I like to call the logical application. So if, you are a, if you're building microservices right now and you're being asked to generate an application level SBOM, how do you do it? Do you take all of the SBOMs from all of the microservices and say, here you go? <laughs> um, I don't know if the auditors are asking for that. I think they're asking for an app, app, they're asking for application level information. If you are an SRE and you get a, you get a call and it says, hey, your logon's not working. Well, we didn't write that. Who did? Where's the ownership of that? Something as simple as understanding who to call if a microservice breaks in your application can be challenging. It would even be hard to answer the question, what version of that microservice are you using for that version of the application? So Artilius tracks that kind of information as well. It tracks a blast radius because it's starting to track this information and all these relationships from the SBOM all the way up to the logical application and the environments that it's running in. We're starting to see that if you make a change to one microservice, what the blast radius is going to be. This microservice is a high-risk microservice because it's going to impact 15 of our, our most important applications we're running within our organization. It's that kind of level of information that begins to build an organization's security profile. So Ortilius can gather data from any source. And we are pulling it as, as quickly as the open source community can build these, uh, these uh, uh, the ability to suck this information in. We're pulling that We're pulling whatever we can pull in. So we can pull in information from uh, GitHub Actions, for example, from APCO, from um, uh, SIFT, as I mentioned. We track things that are happening in Quay and Docker Hub. And today, um, we announced some very exciting news for Ortilius. Red Hat has, uh, has joined the project to contribute what's called a, a universal object reference. A universal object reference is a, basically an artifact repository that can manage any kind of artifact. Ortilius can track the data on any type of artifact. And believe it or not, there's three main types of artifacts containers, database, SQL, and files, pure files, a Salesforce uh, Apex file, uh, any type of file. You, files kind of cover the rest of, of the world. You got containers, you got databases, and you got file systems. So we track that information. And uh, Emporius, it, it, the, the project that the Red Hat team um, contributed is called Emporus. And it will sit on the back end, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Ortelius has been incubating at the CD Foundation for the last two years. Um, we are super thankful to the uh, CD Foundation for supporting the project. Um, they understand the importance of the data that we're gathering and tracking. And it is the next step in the process. I'm a big fan of CD events. Imagine the, the amount of, of, of event processing that we could do if we had proper data. So data is part of the, the puzzle, and centralizing the data is going to be important. If we think about ourselves as a community who's building, the, when I say our, I'm talking about the CD Foundation, as a community who's building a broad solution, what we have to think about, first of all, is how do we get rid of all the one-off scripts? How do we start using data? How do we start building policies? And what can we do to, to fix the interoperability problems? 
CD Events is fixing the interoperability problems. Ortelius is, is worried about gathering the data. Uh, and we have, you know, there are CNCF tools that are out there that are helping with building out the security profiles. So I say, you have the data, let's make it actionable. What, what is actionable, actionable about that kind of data? So first of all, you've got to centralize all of the DevOps and security data. One is not good without the other. Certainly, you might, have an, you might generate an SPOM, but what you need to be able to do is track where the applic that, that particular component is running. Again, in a monolith, it may be a little easier, but it gets more complex as we decompose. So we have to combine the security, SCA, and DevOps information to have the complete picture. One piece is not enough to tell the story. It's just a chapter in the story. How do you view open source packages across your entire organization? When Log4j um, showed up, how many organizations scrambled to figure out where it was running and what had to be rebuilt? And what versions? All of us did. Ortilius answers that question. How do you version microservices? And now, of course, you can check them into Git, uh, you know, or, your, or whatever repo you want to, but there's more than just the microservice itself. It's the microservice and all of the data that's connected to it that needs to be versioned together. Uh, how do we see the logical application? And that's the other thing that Artilius is, is doing, is creating a way for teams to create a logical application that once it's created, every time an underlying service gets updated, a new version is created so that you know you have a new release candidate even though you didn't run a build. And that's what happens in a microservices world. You know, you, in the monolith, we, create a, we, we have a, a process that runs, we have a build, we have a new release for our build. It may or may not get released, it may not get deployed, but at least we know we built it. Our CICD Jenkins ran our build, it, it created our new release. In a microservices environment, you may have an underlying component that you're dependent upon that got rebuilt, but that doesn't mean you knew about it, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you had deployed it. It just means that it got deployed out there, and now you have something broken, and you may not know why. And that's why a release number for an, a logical application is critical. Uh, Ortelius has a CLI. It has a command line interface. And if I were to say where it sits in the process, it pretty much sits kind of if you know if we had the, the left hand side dev and the right hand side ops, it fits kind of on the ops side. Uh, initially, you do your git commit signing and your uh, source and repo scanning, and then you start creating your image, and that's when we when Ortilius is interested in the data. It starts getting interested at the point in time that you 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 build, you create your image, you get your S bomb. Um, it, we're going to push that out and register it so that we can start tracking the changes in your logical application and where it's been deployed and what it's consuming. Because we're going to take that SBOM information, we're going to bring that in, and we're going to continue aggregating that data up, creating a pretty massive set, of, a, a pretty big set of data that now you can build some, some logic around. You can build some policies around. A policy might say, uh, if this microservice is used by more than 20 application teams, it has to go through a more stringent release process. That would be a simple policy. So the architecture, uh, it, the new architecture, this is a, an image of what the new architecture looks like that we're, we're currently working on. Um, it includes a UI uh, that the Emporus project will, will, will use. So Emporus will be, the, will be a back end that will store the objects themselves. In the past, we've not stored, we've not been a, a, a repo. We're just a data collector. Emporus is going to add that back end. We also have a, a we also got a grant from Ripple uh, to create an immutable SPOM ledger. So the, the team is working on that. And if any of you out there are interested in helping an open source project, we would love to have you. There are bounties because we got grant funding, so if you want to get paid for your work, there are bounties out there to help with some of the pull requests. In the middle, there is an Arango uh, DB because there's other information that we have to also do, like login and security information and, and uh, tracking what we call domains. 
and most of it's going to be pushed through the Ortelius REST APIs. So we, we talk about um, gathering evidence and what we do with it. Oftentimes, we, one of our white papers that we use is how to version microservices, and it tends to be one of the most popular uh, downloads. And that's because people have trouble with drift. So what I'm showing you here is components, a list of components and their versions. So this happens to be the cart service, and it has multiple versions of it. And it also has what we call a domain. So let's say, for example, um, you know, I'll, I'll dream with me in, in the future here of what Ortelius could be doing. Ortelius could be managing Kubernetes, right? And all the components underneath Kubernetes. Kubernetes would be our domain. Or we could even have a higher level domain, the Linux Foundation. And underneath the Linux Foundation, we could have Kubernetes, and we could have Argo, and we could have Jenkins. And maybe Jenkins and Argo are one's under CNCF and one's under the CDF. Those are your domains. So that's how Ortelius tries to organize the data, is through a domain-driven design. And each component is assigned, assigned to a domain. And you can then select from a group of, you can look through your domain and say, this is part of my stack. And this is what I want to start tracking as part of my logical application. So the way Ortelius is designed, it has the ability to really track your stack. Now, once we have com the components, um, we start pulling information in about those components, like CVEs, for example, or their license consumption, any of the, any of the data we get from the SBOM. And once we have that data, we can generate the CVEs. This information is useful because if you're an application team and you're about to take on a component that you didn't create, you need an easy way to find out if, the, if everything is going to be approved moving forward. Do, are you able to use the, uh, those licenses within your organization? You also might want to know if there's some outstanding CVEs before you start consuming it. And we know that that happens all the time, right? You get a build out there, it's clean. And a day later, you have a bunch of CVEs because they, something new got found. So oftentimes, I get asked the question, how do you aggregate the data up? Ortelius is not psychic. I would love for it to be, but it's not. It's smart, but it's not psychic. Application teams either use a, a, a TOML file to define their application, or they can use an a, a application designer. You might see this in, uh, in, in, in similar deployment tools where you have to define what your components are and, where, and, and if there's a flow logic to it. We allow you to do that. Most companies use the TOML file. Once that information is there, we have the components, we have the versions. We know what now the application base version is because the application team told us. From there on out, we automate the rest. Any time one of those underlying components gets updated, all the data that that application is, all the microservices data comes up to the application level. Any time one of those components get updated, we create a new, ver a new logical version of your application. So now it looks like a CI server, right? It's exactly what it kind of is. is it, it, it's replacing what uh, CI servers used to do in terms of you ran a new build, you get a new release number. We're creating automatically for you a new release number every time that happens. Now, why is that important? It's important because every time you get a new version of your application, even though you may not have built it, you have, a, you have new SBOMs and you have new CVEs. And Artilius is tracking that for you and showing you what your logical application looks like every time an underlying microservice gets updated. So a new version of a microservice means a new version of your application. A new version of your application means you have a new SBOM and you have new CVEs. Now, why is that important? I can stand up here and give you a, a big, long list of things that uh, is super important. But if we just go back uh, 18 months ago, December of 2021, when we were all asked to say, 
tell, tell me where Log4j is running. Why you do it now because I'm the director and I'm panicked because now we know everybody can get out to the operating system through an exit. Artilius, because it's gathering all that information, can do that. And it does it simply by a search pa a package search within the database. And that package search will result in whatever you might be looking for. And it will tell you all the way down to the, com the application and the component and the environment that it's running in. So you could do a package search based on environments, based on applications, or based on components. And that's where we begin to generate kind of hardcore organizational security level profiles. Because we can now, because it, with the evidence all in one place, we can now start searching it, we can start reporting on it, and we can start doing something about it. Um, I am never have been a big fan of KPIs, to be quite honest, uh, to, to try to track the success of things. But when it comes to our software, we should be able to track these simple levels of detail. The reason why we can't is because in the past, we've had a very bad habit of doing everything with scripts. And scripts generate logs. And logs sit around and are in the build directory, and maybe we'll check them in, and maybe we don't. And as long as we continue to do that, so the, the most important core data is going to sit around and we're not going to ever be able to see it, use it, and start building some really cool logical AI systems on top of that data. This is where it's going to, this, these are the kinds of tools that that data is going to come from. The kind of data that we're talking about is just the drift of a single microservice. What is the drift? Tell me how many versions I'm running in all my different clusters or even in my different namespaces. Simple, simple data that we need to start aggregating up. Now, a lot of this data is out there, you know, and sometimes it's between all these different tools. You might have a deployment tool that you're using that's showing you that. You might have Spinnaker sitting here showing you that. You have stuff that's in GitHub, but we haven't centralized it. And until we can centralize it, it's, it makes it really difficult for us to start using it. So ultimately, the goal of Ortilius is to really start building upon the data, centralizing the data, so that we can now take the next step and start building more intelligent systems around DevOps. And that is ultimately, ultimately the goal, because we've been doing this for a long time, you guys. <laughs> we have been writing scripts for so long, and we still haven't really solved some of our, core, our bigger problems. We have a lot of scripts that we, we, we need to retire over the course of a few years. That's one of the reasons why I'm really into CD events. Um, the CD events project summit, I think, is happening today during lunch. I highly recommend you go and listen to what they're doing because CD events has the ability to disrupt how we do CI CD altogether. And C, things like CD events, just like think about cloud events. It has to have something to act upon, and the data is what it's going to act upon. So I've been pushing CD events now for a couple of years. The project's going really well. They're starting to you know, get kind of their first big release ready for everybody to take a look at. But it will be the way we solve the plug-in problem, and we solve how to start automating without somebody doing it. <laughs> And we want to get there. We want to get there where we can just rely on the data. We don't have to go and look at the data and then tell the system what to do. The system can look at the data, and then it does what it needs to do. If we can have self-driving cars, folks, we can do this in DevOps. <laughs> now, we talked about a blast radius. Um, uh, something as simple as trying to figure out what your application's consuming and what version. We're tracking that information, and we provide some interesting graphical maps to do so. And in Porus, we're super excited to welcome the Red Hat team. They have um, some really uh, deep ideas on how to expand the use of a, a, a repository to, in, to make it universal. And because Ortilius already supports files, DB objects, and uh, containers. It was a perfect match between what the Red Hat team is working on in this universal uh, object reference uh, and what Ortilius is already doing with the data. 
and Vincent Dannon, who is a VP of Red Hat Product Security. You know, he talks about uh, how important these types of tools will be to assist security and operational teams in for supply chain policies. And that's eventually what we're getting to. Thank you so very much. Um, again, ortelius.io is where you can go to learn more. Um, I, again, if you're an open source contributor, please come and talk to us because we would love to have you on the team. And you can always reach me at uh, tracy-reagan-oms on LinkedIn and reach out to me and I'm always happy to schedule time and chat about what we need in the open source uh, uh, contributor world. And I've already had some of you reach out to me, so much love. <laughs> Thank you. Can I answer any questions? I know this is a disruption in our model. It totally is. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering about um, integrations where you're talking where this is a, uh, an area where it's, uh, it, like we, we've got a lot of other tools, that, but this kind of answers a lot of our problems that are kind of in the middle. Uh, so, for instance, in our land, uh, for, we actually are very tied, we're absolutely tied to like ServiceNow for uh, change management and so on. Yep. So I'm going to let our CTO answer that question. So, please speak if you could, yeah, speak up and kind of. So we'll, we'll, we'll integrate there at the build level, and that's usually through our CLI. So when you, let's say you do a Docker build, and then you're going to push that image over to your registry. After the image has been pushed, we're going to go out and talk to uh, Ortelius and tell Ortelius what we just did. And what that gives us is the information about uh, the git commit, and there's a bunch of Git information we can gather uh, at that level. You know, lines changed, um, what branch you're on, all that fun stuff. So, and then that ties to um, what your artifact created. Because right now, if you look at um, artifacts, you have no way to get backwards to the Git world unless you go through and embed it into um, the artifact in some way. So that is the first level where we do that integration is, is right around the build time. The second part of the integration is when you deploy. Where did this thing end up going? And after you deploy it, we want to record what went where. And with that, um, we're able to now map together all your dependency relationships. So we know that this um, service was deployed out to this environment. Let's say it went out to QA. Uh, and we know which version went out to QA. And now, because we know the version that's running in QA and the version that's running in production, we can calculate the drift between the two of them. So that's, those are the two main um, points that we do the, the integration at. So things like um, ServiceNow, uh, Jira, um, any of those types of tools, those are going to be inputs that we're going to gather usually at the build time. We'll, we'll gather uh, information about, okay, this is the Jira ticket being worked on for this fix. And we'll associate that information at build time as part of the, that version of the, of the artifact that we're tracking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, so, for instance, within ServiceNow, we have our listing of all of our microservices. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, we're going to have a conversation over mics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, with within our org, we actually have our listing of all of our uh, within our ServiceNow. We have our listing of all of our um, integrations um, and all of our consumers and dependencies that are all, all like ma managed internally, anyhow. And uh, always the mapping between them as far as what's currently in production, including the drifts and so on, is always a challenge. Uh, and uh, so as part of a release, what we've been looking at 
is how do we actually identify all those um, uh, and actually uh, uh, through this, this tool for security purposes would be useful, but also just for change management right. uh, for identifying those and actually doing an API call, for instance, out to ServiceNow. Yeah, so on the uh, producers, consumers, when you're talking about like RESTful APIs, PubSub type of thing, um, we want to, when we gather that information, we're going to version it. So we know that this version of this microservice, for example, has published these endpoints. And this is what the endpoints look like. Now, those endpoints could have had a, could be different than the ones that are running in production because they've added a new parameter, for example. So we want to keep track of all that history as things go through time so we can understand and calculate the drift uh, based on that. So your information that you have in your service now about your, your uh, producers and consumers would be inputs that we would gather in um, version as part of the process. And to, Steve will be doing a demo in the demo theater, I think it is tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow after lunch. And we will be having an Artilius project summit with some of the contributors there. Um, and that is, that's tomorrow at lunch. I think your demo is today. No, it's tomorrow. It's, it's tomorrow? They're at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so look for, yeah, tomorrow, at, is that tomorrow at four? Sorry, I have to scroll back down to see what date I was on. Yeah. So is that, no, that answer your question? I think uh, yeah, you're today at four, Steve. Mm -hmm. 305, 340, here it comes. You find it? I thought I did. <laughs> you got a question yeah. while she's scrolling? Four o'clock, demo theater today. All right, four o'clock. Yeah, so he'll, he can show right you more here. of that. And <laughs> the, uh, tomorrow at, at lunch is the Ortelius Project Summit, and uh, please uh, come to that. And before you guys leave, I have Ortelius shirt uh, jackets. I only have a few left, and they kind of run small, so I'm going to leave them out here. Uh, I'm wearing a large. <laughs> I'll keep it to two. <laughs> um, what does uh, CVE integration look like, say, with Sneak or some of the other tools? What do you see people doing? Right. So our CVE um, integration is um, – so what we've done is we've separated the SBOM um, from the CVEs. And what I mean by that is at build time, we'll go through and take the SBOM that was generated. We'll persist that as a version in our database. Now we know all the packages that you're consuming and the versions of them. And then we go over to the OpenSSF's OSV dev, and we cross-reference to see if there's any CVEs that are outstanding for that. Now what that does is because we separated the two, is if we get a new CVE that's found, um, we'll be able to report on it. Um, so it's not like a, a point in time CVE report. It's more of a, you know, what's happening uh, as the CVEs are found for, uh, day to day. And right now there, there are some pull requests that they're working on notifications around that. Because that really becomes the problem. You know, you didn't go, you know, I have to go and bring up Ortilius to see what your CVEs are for the day. <laughs> So we need to be able to uh, automate the notifications around that based on groups. Awesome. Uh, okay, other, one out of 10. <laughs> um, and then my other question was, could you use the API to say, write a Kubernetes admission controller where you could call back to Artilius and say, you know, this maybe certain version has CVEs I don't want and reject the deployment? Uh, that's gonna be more at the, like a OPA level. Yeah. Um, so we'll have the information and OPA can come out and query us to say, um, I'm getting ready to deploy this version of this uh, container out to Kubernetes. What's its uh, security profile look like? Um, so that's where that would fit in. So Ortilius isn't going to, going to be the policy agent, but it's gonna give inputs into it. It's, it's, it's just gonna drive, the, it's the data driver, right? right. Yeah, that's what I, we, we do that with OPA today, but we talked to Sneak's API, so I was wondering if I could just rip that out and use Artilius' yeah. API instead. Yeah, exactly. Any others? <laughs> well, I have to run to another talk. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank I you, I appreciate everybody. you guys being here.